Welcome back guys, this is part 40 of the Rick and Morty app series. We're going to continue building out search, particularly uh, we're going to build out the no results view since search is a bit of a complex part of our app. So start by hitting that like button down below, say hello in the comments, let me know if you've made it this far since 40 videos is pretty pretty long already and we're going to we're gonna do a lot more stuff here, so let's continue. So like I mentioned in the last video, search is one of those things where you wanna break it down as much as possible and comment everything because it can get a little insane with the number of things going on. So we did create these individual views to encapsulate stuff that's gonna go on and we're gonna actually build each thing out iteratively. So the first thing we'll build is the no uh, search results view. What I'll actually do is just override the initializer and like I mentioned, we won't be breaking our view model pattern. We actually do have a view model for this, which is no results uh, search view view model. In here, what I'll do is we'll have a title and this title will be no results. And we'll also have a image here and this image will be a UI image and we're gonna use a system name and the reason autocomplete isn't cooperating is because we need to import UI kit. And I'm gonna actually open up uh, SF symbols here and we're gonna try to find like a search, no results icon or something. So we want, let's see, results. Maybe we'll look for the word search. So maybe we'll use this here. So we have magnifying glass. I'll use the one with a circle and we'll be leveraging this to kind of show the user that, hey, there were no results. Cool, so let's come back to our uh, view that we need to build out, and we're gonna create this view model in the global scope here. We'll stick a uh, initializer comment here, and more or less, all that we wanna do in this is have a label and an image. So we're gonna wanna lay this out with constraints, and we'll want to actually create those sub views. So let me go ahead and do that. We'll do private let icon view is going to be our UI image view like so. The icon view will be UI image view. We are going to return it like so. We'll say translates auto resizing mask into constraints will be false. And we also want this to maintain its aspect ratio and fit the image. Maybe we'll also go and give it a nice tint color and I'll actually go ahead and say system blue here. And that's probably good enough for the icon view. We shall copy and paste it and here we'll have a single label of type UI label. Go ahead and copy all of that and just make sure you rename these to be appropriate. We want this to have a text alignment of center and maybe we'll also change the fonts. We'll go ahead and say that this is a system font of size 20 with a weight of perhaps semi-bold, like so. Um, let me actually go and do medium instead of semi-bold. And let's see, I think we can add these as subviews. So we'll go and say add subviews, plural. We want the icon view as well as the label. We're gonna say add constraints, which I'll create right down here. Alrighty, and then I'll go and say configure. Well, we're going to actually assign the properties that we hold inside the view model. So label.text will be view model.title, and our icon views image will be view model dot, and we have image in here. Let's add these constraints. And you guys can start to see that this, this whole process of building out views and whatnot is incredibly repetitive. While there are minor differences, like in this case, we're gonna have a fixed, maybe like 90 by 90 size for our, um, for our icon view. There is a lot of similarity between things as well. So we are going to say the top anchor is going to be equal to the top anchor of the view. And on the x-axis, we are going to say that this is centered uh, in the x-axis position, so left to right, constraints equal to center x anchor. Awesome. And the last thing we'll do is for the label, this one's a little simpler, we'll say left anchor is equal to left anchor, right is right, bottom is bottom. Go ahead and adjust this. Right anchor, bottom anchor. 
and we are going to also say that the top anchor is equal to the bottom of the image and we'll add some space and maybe say 10 and the absolute last thing we'll actually do here is we're going to say that the height anchor is going to be a constraint uh, greater than and equal to a constant we at least want the label height to be 60. And this is probably a, a constraint that we haven't seen before. So just make sure you have all your commas in place. And we should be able to create and add this view now. So let's go back to our kind of master search view, which is just a top level search view. And let's create this view here. So we'll say private let no results view will be this guy. We will add this in our um, in our initializer. So we'll say add sub views we want to add this we are going to eventually want constraints so i will create a function here for that we'll say add constraints and we're going to want to constrain a bunch of things but for now we'll just start with this view here so we're going to give it a fixed width uh, anchor with a constant of let's go ahead and maybe do like 150 and see what that looks like we'll also do that for the height here as well we want this to be center aligned on the x-axis so this here will be center to the x and we'll also have a center aligned to the y-axis so go ahead and give this a build and run just make sure you fix any typos you've got here like i did there and we should see this no results view when we tap into search so it looks like I actually don't see it. And I think the reason we don't see it is we never actually added this base search view in the search controller. So let's jump into the RM search controller and let's create this view. So what I'll do here is I'll say private let search view will be our view. And the search view, we want to add as a sub view. So let's say view, add sub view or sub views, either or, you're just passing in one view. And we will say add constraints, private func, add constraints, NS layout constraints, basically where we can specify all of our constraints that we want to activate as a collection. And we just want to pin this to all four sides like we have done previously. So we'll say safe area layout guide. And I never really explained what the safe area layout guide thing is. Essentially what this lets you do and tell your, uh, tell the device is respect any area where we would have text cut off. So on these phones, on the 14s and 13s, you know we have a notch at the top. So the safe area actually handles um, kind of putting your content in area that is safe for it such that it doesn't get cut off. That is why it's called safe area. So if you've ever wondered and just kind of blindly use this, now you know what it actually is. So let's try to give this a build and run. Looks like it is yelling at me because to actually create it, what we specified is passing a view model. Alrighty, so we can actually say this gets created in the initializer and I'll say self.search view will be our search view with a frame of zero. And this will be our view model with a configuration. And this config will basically be our configuration. And we don't actually need to hold this configuration on here anymore since we are holding it inside of our, uh, our view model here. So let me actually jump into the view model. And back in our controller to set the title, we're going to now say, our view model dot config dot type so let's actually hang on to the view model in the global space of this controller so this will be view model and let me create it here we'll say our view model is this guy here alrighty so we're creating it with our config we'll say self dive view model is view model and we want to hang on to this here so we'll say private let view model will need to be created appropriately like so we're passing in that view model here and down to set this title we're now leveraging the config on the view model so a whole lot of typing let's build and run and let's see if we now see that no results view so cool we in fact do we also see the red um, kind of master search view 
it looks like it's actually yelling at me about some constraints. So something is off and something's going a little wrong. So let's see what's what's actually the problem here. So I'm just gonna audit my code before reading the error, but let's see, let's see what it is. So I wanna say it's related to the no results view. So I'm gonna comment out this stuff. And the reason I know we have problems is because the console is basically yelling at me. So cool, those errors went away. Let's add this back. So we're adding that sub view. And what we're doing here is we're saying give it a fixed width and height and center it in the X and Y coordinate space. Nothing seems too fishy with that. Let's come into here. In here, it looks like for both the label and the image, we are assigning the translates uh, auto resizing mask and constraints property. It looks good. We have that here as well. Let's see what's going on here. So for width and height, we're specifying something. Top and center, we're also specifying something. We've got left, right, bottom here, as well as top. Let's get rid of this height and let's see what's going on. Because I feel like some constraints are being conflicting. We'll click into this. Okay, cool, we don't have any warnings now. Let me double check. So it looks like this height constraint was conflicting with the fact that this entire frame for no results has a fixed height and width of 150. So hopefully that made sense and hopefully you guys understood how I debug that. So let me jump back to the search view. We'll change the red color here to simply be system background. So it's no longer obnoxious. Let's put this into light mode and see what this looks like. So cool, we do have no results showing uh, by default. The very last thing we'll do prior to committing and pushing our work is we don't want this no results to be kind of shown um, up front, right? Whenever we search for something, that's when we want to actually show this if no results come back. So what that should kind of signal to you is this no results view by default should be hidden. And I also just mentioned a few times we want to know once we search and get something back, we don't even have a button to search. So when the user is done typing, sure on the keyboard they can hit search, but what if like we want an actual search button? What I'll do is at the top right, I'm gonna add a bar button item to actually search. So let's go to the controller. In our controller, we are going to add it at the bottom of view to load. I'll say navigation item. So that right bar button item is going to be UI bar button item. And we're going to create it with a title instead of the standard type here. The title is going to be search. The style will be done. Target will be self. And action is which, uh, which function is called when you tap it. So did tap execute search. And I'm just going to stick this function right down here. It'll be annotated with objective C. It'll be private to the controller and we want to handle the search. So eventually we'll do something along the lines of view model dot execute search. Now we don't have this yet, so I'll comment it out so it doesn't yell at me. And finally, like I promised, I will actually stage and commit everything. But let me just run this to make sure no results isn't showing. It is not awesome. Let's cd into the project folder. We're going to commit this and say added no search results view. And we'll also push it as well. All right, bear with it. Boom, good to go. Thanks for watching. Drop a like before clicking to the next part. In the next part, what we'll probably do is we'll probably start building out uh, either our view model or the search input view that I promised would go up here. So I will see you guys in the next part.